So, welcome back to another Game Stuff episode. And this is where I talk about some new games, some new movies, some maybe some new books that I bought over the last few months. So, we'll start off with a game that we were just playing, me and Rob, and that is Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U. And I can honestly say that this is by far the best Mario Kart I've ever played. It is fantastic. We played every night. I've gotten a lot better than I was in the beginning. It's just knowing when to power slide. That's really it. And you should be continuously power sliding through real level. Uh, love it. Love the graphics. They're fantastic. I love the inclusion of all the old uh, racetracks from some of the older versions. It's, it's a fantastic game. Uh, if you have a Wii U, you must buy this. And right away we have another Wii U game and Kim is a huge Donkey Kong fan. She grew up playing it, she loved it uh, on the Super Nintendo. And uh, when Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze was announced, she's like, I I've got to get that game. Now I must admit, I read some of the reviews that were out at the time and it was saying, oh my god, the game is so hard, it's very frustrating, blah blah blah. So it kind of made us hold off on getting it. I saw it for $35 in game deals, and I'm like, you gotta go for it, type of thing. So, she bought it, and her and Hanzo, I got her and Hanzo to start playing it. Because I was afraid of the difficulty. I was like, oh my god, I bet this game's gonna... Because I'm somebody, I get so frustrated, I go bananas at times. No pun intended. But, <laughs> so they started playing it, and I was really enjoying sitting on the couch every night watching them play this game, and watching them doing the screaming, because the game is very difficult. It does have its moments, that's for sure, but in the end of the day, they did get to the final boss, and unfortunately, before Hanzo left back to Germany, they did not beat the final boss, but uh, they were working so hard on it, I, I feel really bad about that for them, but what a fantastic game. The graphics are unbelievable, and here's something else. Not a lot of people talk about it. The music in this game is fantastic. We all actually, uh, at one point, would say, listen to the music, how good it is, how good it is. So, if you're on the fence about it, you can get this game a little bit cheaper, not full price. I think you'll really like it. But understand, there is a difficulty uh, level there for it, so be wary. Now, I have no idea about this game. Hanzo recommended it and said it was a it was a, a bit of a, a gem in the rough, and that is Binary Domain. And you can see I bought it for $6.99 in a used video game store. What do you guys think about this game? I, I, I really... It kind of just kind of came out, went right past me, went over my head. I just... I didn't even see it kind of coming. I didn't even see it where it went. Uh, it was just kind of over, and then all of a sudden he, he like, hands was like, you got to try this game. It's really cool. I'm like, okay, so... I haven't played it, I'm gonna try it out, see if I like it. Hey, it only cost me six bucks, you know? Not a bad deal. Now, the next game I bought is a Super Famicom game, and it has a bit of a history for me. <laughs> for nearly 20 years of a history. And here it is, look at this. Right over here. 1991. I bought this Famitsu magazine. It's a, a Japanese video game magazine, very popular over there. And I, I'd, I'd always flip through it and look at all the Japanese games that would, you know, would never come over here, or some of them have made it out, but most have not. And I would always flip through, and I'd always see this one game called Earthlight. And I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Military Madness, uh, an overhead strategy game on the uh, Turbo Graphics. And this looked like the same kind of uh, idea, but with robots, very cartoony. And I, and I always loved it, and it's so funny. I picked up this magazine, I don't know how many times over the last 20 years-ish, and looked at it and always wondered, what the fuck is Earthlight? I've never seen or you know heard anybody talking about it. On eBay, $12 later, I got a copy of Earthlight. And it's a strategy game. And you have uh, you have ships that you maneuver through like asteroid fields and stuff like that, and your ships can transform into robots as well. So I like the idea of it. Very cartoony American style uh, drawings to it, but it was by Hudson Soft, so I will definitely be giving that a go. So those are the games. Then I bought a few movies. Fuck shit. The first movie I have never. 
You know, I, I, let me rephrase that. Back in the 80s, when I used to go to, uh, you know, rental stores, I'd always see this, 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 this cover right here up on the shelf for VHS copies. And the movie's called Evil Speak. And I was always like, oh, that looks like a stupid movie. I don't know what it is. The movie is about this guy who is in a military academy. And he's picked on terribly. It's actually Ron Howard's brother. So he uses his computer to bring Satan back into this world. And all the people who picked on him in this uh, academy, he has free reign on. He kills them in the most grotesque ways and stuff like that. It's... I honestly can say it's absolutely hilarious. It came out in 1982, and the main character is called Cooper Smith. And I, I'm mentioning that that there's a there's a game that you can play. I invented this game. I had a lot of friends over one night, and we were, we I said, hey guys, you all gotta sit and watch this movie. I had watched it the night before, and everybody's drinking, we're having a good time. I said, but we're gonna play the Cooper Smith drinking game. Every time they say the main character's name, Cooper Smith, you have to take a shot. I am telling you, at the end of this movie, everybody was wasted. We were completely drunk out of our minds playing the Cooper Smith game. The and also, the movie, when you're drinking, gets better and better and better. So I really recommend Evil Speak. It is hilarious. Very, very funny. Now onto the anime side of things, look at this. A lot of you will shake your heads and go, what the hell is this? And I'm going to tell you. It is Nadia, The Secret of Blue Water. A 39 episode anime TV show that ran back in the, I think, 1989. This is a great anime and not a lot of people have heard of it. I Back in the day I bought my VHS copies and I think it was, you get two episodes on a VHS tape for... I don't know, it was like 30 or 40 dollars. It was rip off back then. This is the olden days of anime. And so it's really nice, and there, there's some DVDs. I do have the DVDs as well, but they're all collected now on Blu ray. And it's a, it's a very cool story. It's a story of Atlantis and this girl, Nadia, and she's got this blue uh, necklace called the, the, the Blue Water, and uh, the submarine, the Nautilus, and the captain, and all these characters, and these characters are trying to get the blue water off Nadia. And what a lot of people don't remember as well is that Nadia was one of the most popular characters in Japan at one time. I think she, her character got voted above Nausicaa for, for I think a year or so. So this is a very popular anime. Not a lot of people know about it. Uh, kind of expensive Blu-ray, but I cannot wait to watch this fully again. It's a, it's a great classic anime series. Okay, a couple more to get here. I have not watched this. Chinese Zodiac, I do not hear good things about it. It is Armor of God 3, for anybody who do not do not know about that great Jackie Chan series. I, I can honestly say, I love the, uh, the Armor of God series. It is by far up there as my favorite Jackie Chan films. Uh, so I can't wait to see the third movie. It's modernized. I know Jackie's getting kind of old, but we'll see how it goes. Next up, I bought this on eBay from Hong Kong, uh, Meals on Wheels. What I can honestly say is by far my favorite Jackie Chan film of all time, without a doubt. I love Meals on Wheels. It is, it is, it is super cheesy, 80s, but freaking Jackie Chan in his prime. And you gotta see him fight in this movie. It will just fuck you up. It is amazing stuff. Um, I could go on about this for about an hour, but let's just, just trust me on it. If you haven't seen Meals and Wheels, check it out. You'll have a really fun time. Watch it with some friends. When they get into the, the, the end fight sequences, man, I still get shivers watching some of that stuff. And speaking of which, I, I'll just do a quick, I had to buy Bloodsport and Time Cop with a double feature on, uh, on Blu-ray here. It was pretty cheap. It's, I think about $10 off Amazon. Had to pick that up. And man, I was, I was in, I really got into this, uh, this, I had to order this. The art of Drew Struzan. For anybody who doesn't know, Drew Struzan is an artist in the 80s and, and 90s, and up to now, obviously. 
who did a lot of movie posters, a lot of classic movie posters like Back to the Future, Indiana Jones, uh, Blade Runner, even the Harry Potter series, and unfortunately the episodes one, two, and three. But oh, I just, I just really got into his artwork, and I was like, I really. I want to own the art book on this, and the art book is really wonderful. It's it's got all of his works in here, a lot of them, and uh, a lot of surprises in there. A lot of things you forget that he 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 did back then. So I uh, love this, really good. And then I found out about this, the Drew Susan documentary, the man behind the poster, and I had to go visit my mom and sister about a, a week ago, and I had to do a plane ride, and I watched this movie on the plane, and I can tell you it was really interesting insight into this this man and his artwork and it was it was interesting to find out how much he gave up to do his art and uh, he really struggled financially for years before he made it big so he didn't just he wasn't just huge to begin with so and I I miss uh, Drew Susan's artwork I miss hand-drawn movie posters if you see nowadays most movie posters are Photoshopped. They were completely photoshopped and uh, that's the modern way of doing it now, but I miss the old paintings like nobody paints like he does. He's uh, unbelievable. So Okay, we're running out of time here. So I'll just keep on rocking and rolling. I picked this up Exalted uh, this comic book tale of the visiting flare and the only reason why I picked this up is that Hanzo did the artwork <sighs> He did a really good job a really great job and he did all the, the line work here. And oh, he's just... Such a great... Oh man, yeah. I hadn't sat and read it, but I, I just looked at his artwork and was like, this is fucking awesome. So, Hanzo, amazing job. Really good stuff. Love that. Last, certainly, certainly not least. How could I not get this? The Ease art book by Udon. That just showed up this week. And it covers all of the artwork for all of the Ease games. All of them. And it's surprising when I was looking at this, I'm like, holy cow, they've done so much artwork for this series over the years. And again, I'm so happy this series has not been forgotten. And it still has a bit of life left in it. It's still it's still kind of going on over here. People are knowing about it a little bit more. I, I when I originally started my channel, that was one of my focuses to push the E series. I did have a motive for coming onto YouTube. It was to push the E series and, and uh, Fantasy Star, and I think I've been successful with it uh, to a certain degree. So uh, it's wonderful to have an entire art book on the E series. Uh, I, I highly highly recommend it if you are an E fan. So. Anyways, guys, we come to the end of new game stuff and uh, had a lot of fun, a lot of really cool picks here and a lot of stuff I can't wait to watch and check out and play. So, especially uh, Earthlight. I'm dying to know what that's all about. So, anyways, guys, until next time.